So there are mo multiple benefits surrounding foam stream. Obviously, number one is, is safety. So we're not using a herbicide. It's, it is not a herbicide, so it's not harmful in that manner. Um, operational efficiencies. So you can operate foam stream in any weather condition. Doesn't matter if it's chucking it down with rain, it doesn't matter if it's windy, because it's, remember it's the heat that's in the water that's controlling the plant, so it doesn't matter if the foam drifts off, the foam is enabling the, the transfer of the heat, and it acts as a thermal blanket to keep the heat on the plant for longer. There's fiscal and economic arguments for, for foam stream to be good. Um, it's a great PR story, uh, and it's a great public kind of... It, it, it keeps them calm. So when you say, right, we're looking at the alternative methods, we've looked at everything, and actually, we've come up with what we believe is the best alternative method in the market, it's foam stream. And this is for the spaces we're talking about with regards to um, what we talked about there, you know, parks and play areas and sensitive places where the public are. Um, legislative issues. So on June the 28th this year, I think you'll all remember, there was a, we, we were very excited in our office that actually something had accelerated ahead two years of where it could have been, which would have been a potential decision to restrict the use of glyphosate in the open public spaces. For six weeks before that, all I did was do quotes for councils and contractors. Six weeks for the two days afterwards when it wasn't actually restricted anywhere. It was just, well, we, we might review it in 18 months. I spent two, two weeks on the phone, or two days on the phone getting told, yeah, we know where you are, thanks very much. So it, it speaks massive volumes about what's going to happen. And all the people I had that conversation with said, we know it's not a matter of, of if, it's a matter of when. So the realism of where we're at, and the, when we talk, we, we sell a lot of stuff in France and Europe and uh, all around there. And the, their mindset is very different. It's a culturally different thought process to how they deal with, with herbicide. Um, so here's, here's an example, and is one of the benefits. So it's fast acting, it's long lasting. So that's on a trickling filter bed. That's, that's the following day, okay? And that will then disintegrate and dis disperse on its own, the, the moss that's on there. I treated the, we treated the area, just the, the triangle you can see. So that's a week later on that. Again, it, it's just very evident how it works. I'm trying to get into some more spaces, but even on thick, dense growth, that's a, again, it's another trickling filter bed. Um, but what we're trying to do as well is help you have less failures, so less labor time, if, you, if you're comparing it to something like hand weeding, reduced failures, less treatment cycles. So foam stream will give you probably similar treatment cycles in a season to what you're used to with herbicide. So you're not going to get around in the same space in the same time, but you're going to get the same results. Um, you can use it in wind. Uh, you reduce, uh, for the water companies particularly who are dealing with the, uh, I know it's a parking attendant, but it's the only fine type thing I could find. Um, it helps you avoid fines. Now, the, in the water space that I deal with, their fine used to be 10 grand if, if their final effluent water went out and there was a problem. It's now 100,000 pounds. It's a big difference for them. So if they get it wrong now, they're in trouble. Well, they were in trouble before. So this is at the Royal Parks, uh, and this gives you a very good idea. So on the left is, is an area of kind of a bike store. Um, you can see the growth on that, and they, they don't know how to treat that at the moment because they're not allowed to use herbicide on it. So they can't trim it because it's gravel, and they can't get a strim around the metal bars. So we went in, and, and that's, I think it's two weeks, or nearly two weeks after application. You can see how clean that is. So that's just one example of where foam stream's very good. Now, foam dribbles out of the lance. It's not, we're not spraying it out at, like a Ghostbusters. It's very kind of measured, so it's quite precise. It's quite accurate. This, again, this is the same, same site, but it gives you an idea. So that's a, a pathway there. Um, and the day we treated it was chucking down with rain. Um, over a drain, so any of the contractors who are out there, the the um, sustainable use directive says you're not allowed to spray on on any hole a drain that's near a borehole. I've asked every contractor I've asked, they couldn't tell me where the borehole drains are or not. Um, again, just another another bit of moss that's on the on the on an area there, uh, and then this you know again on cobbles and and surfaces. Um, where, where the traffic of the public going up and down. It's fantastic on all of these surfaces. We've dealt with a lot of people in the last three, four, five years, particularly the last two years, where we've tried everything to get it into clients. So we've done hires, we've done rentals, we've done demos, we've done everything, sales. Um, all the people that we talk to and we deal with, 99% of them love what we do. So, you know, we've got 
the guys from Glastonbury who do what they do. It's, it's, you know, I don't know any other products personally where people are so positive about promoting it quite freely on their own accord. And the, same, the Burley guys are going to be very honest about it today. The Quadrant guys are very honest about it. The Southwest Water guys, all the guys we deal with will tell you. And if you ever want to speak to any of our clients in the UK, please ring me and I will introduce you so that it's not me doing what I need to do. It's a sales job. They will sell it to you.